take my picture on I thought, oh, goodness gracious. And Lisa started watching it. I, I sat through a couple of minutes of it. I just couldn't think that. Well, listen to that now. Oh, goodness gracious. But you know, we'll give you some more. We'll give you some more, dude. Oh, my goodness. That took me to sleep pretty fast. I, I, told, I told Lisa, I said, looking at it was kind of strange because uh, everybody sitting out here sees me standing up here, but when I'm up here, I see all of y'all. It just seems like a strange thing to, to, to see myself from that point of view. And, and I don't know if you realize or not, but if you ever looked in the mirror, at yourself in the mirror, you're not seeing yourself in the mirror. You're seeing the opposite of what you are. And the problem with that DVD was if that's the way I better, everybody sees it, that's not the reverse. So uh, bear with me a little, as Paul says, bear with me a little with my father. Um, we had uh, started this morning, you know, speaking about the, uh, the uh, introducing the parables of the kingdom, and, and I was telling Lisa that a mental image came to my mind I, I, somewhere before I, I quit speaking, but uh, uh, it seems fitting to bring it to your attention now that uh, the, the emblem of, uh, I know we've all had this experience of sitting with your family, you get the pictures out, but now they do it on the cameras, on your phones, and all that stuff, not quite the same, but y'all remember those days when when company would come and you'd get the box out, it's got all the family pictures in it, and you'd pick them up and you'd be passing around and, and, and looking at those little snapshots. And every one of those little pictures has got a, you got a memory with it. And you, you, maybe you, you got your daughter's four years old and you got a picture of her when she was maybe a year old or six months old. And you can, you tell them things and the kids, they just take that stuff in. That's what these parables are. It, it's, that's the family of God. We had the privilege of gathering ourselves together and the Lord has given us some snapshots of the, of the, of the kingdom, of the church. Uh, my prayer for you this evening, that's, I, I had to catch myself, I had to make myself say, even so you should say in the morning, but the, my prayer for you is that these, uh, that you'll take these with you, that you'll treasure them in your hearts and that, uh, that, that it won't be just, won't be something that we just look at and, and throw to the side and forget. That's something we'll take with us. And something not only we would put we treasure in our hearts and hide in our hearts, but we we'll teach our children and our grandchildren these things. I had the had the privilege this weekend, I was down at the Shepherd Annex, Shepherd Air Force Base Annex, and there's a lot of airplanes over there. It's just a campground, what it is. And, and we had a cabin out there, and we were all sitting together. Uh, we had to put out these three tables and and all of us had cabins, but the middle cabin, we was up there. Some of us, we was all playing, and most of us was, uh, we took out our song books. I carry a few with me to find me everywhere I go, and sing some of those gospel songs. And my new son-in-law was telling me that uh, uh, he was talking to a, a, a fellow at his church, not from the church at his work, about the doctrines of sovereign grace. And he'd been struggling with this stuff. I think I kind of relayed a little bit of that to you been struggling with, with salvation by grace, feeling like there's something we need to do, and I don't have to get a lot into that, but he was explaining to him about God being sovereign and trying to trying to explain to him about why there why there, we, there's no works on our part to do, and I thought to myself, Lord, thank you uh, for showing him that. He's, he's beginning to, to explore that, and as, as, he tries to, as he tries to expound on it to somebody, and we do the same thing, it's one of those snapshots I was talking about. We learn, that's how the Lord, that's how the Holy Spirit teaches us. It is, when we step out on faith and walk by faith, the Lord steps up to us. He's never far from us, but teaching us those things. You know, he, he, one of the places in the scripture tells us that um, about not consider what we're going to say or what we're going to do. He said, for, for I will, for it will not be you that speak it, but the Holy Spirit, I'll teach you what to say. And we, we sing us all. I'll teach you what to say. He teaches us the things to say. And we don't know what to pray for or how to pray sometimes. And Paul tells us in the scripture, we've got a great promise that when we can't pray, it's that the Spirit prays on our behalf and groans and other things that can't be uttered. In other words, he's saying that there are things that there are things that are desired to pray for that we just don't have to work for. You know, I don't know, Sister Stephanie, if you tell me that you you got a heartache, I can pray that the heart, but I don't know what you're feeling. And, and I don't know what is necessarily the best thing for you, but I know the one who does. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon us and praying on our behalf those things to the Father that we don't know what to pray for. That's the same way we preach it. I don't know when I, 
when I open this book and begin to try to begin to think to myself and contemplate on, on what the Lord might want me to preach to you on, on Sunday, I, I do know that I've been had a desire to talk about these parables, these little snapshots that we talked about of, of the church. But you know, I worry sometimes that maybe my understanding is, is off. If my understanding is off, I can only show you and talk to you what I can see, what I can perceive from this. And most of it's pretty dim. Paul said, "We well, now we see through a glass darkly. But then later on, it's face to face. Now we, now we know in part. That means I preach. I can only preach in part. But there will come a day that we'll that it won't be like that. We'll still be face to face. And and Paul said, "We'll know even as we're also known." Now, people can interpret that how they want to. They say, "Well, I don't know if we'll know each other in heaven." I take that to mean that in the same way that He knows us. I mean, not in the same perfect sense. But in the same manner that he knows us, we'll know one another. We have that same kind of knowledge. That being said, uh, again, back to the 13th chapter. I'm going to take my watch off this thing. I think I worked overtime last night. Uh, <clears throat> not, that, not that I'm really too, too concerned about the time, but we got to eating lunch and we talked about you know, how you keep your food and satisfied. But anyway, concerning the kingdom of God, uh, we, we had talked, I had, had mentioned to you earlier about how that. The prophecies concerning the coming of the kingdom, back in back in, in Daniel chapter, I believe it was chapter four and chapter seven, uh, how the Lord talked about the, 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 in the days of those kings, that that king, the last king that we're talking about was the Roman Empire, uh, how the Lord, the, the God of heaven, would set up a kingdom that w- which should not be left to other people and it would it would never be destroyed. Uh, that that kingdom is with us today. And God has taken the kingdom. Uh, from, the, from the Jews, removed it from the law, from its prospects of the law, and given that, that kingdom to the church, and we today call that the kingdom church, or the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven. And in the 21st century, we refer to that kingdom as the old, the old line, primitive Baptist church. And so, when Jesus, Jesus was given parables of the kingdom, it was meant, as we understood, uh, it was not meant to reveal the truth concerning the kingdom to the world. That's the, the Bible was not written to the world. But it's written to the Lord's people. And uh, they that have an ear to hear, he said, let them hear, as it said in chapter 43 of the uh, of this 13 chapter, the righteous shall shine in the, as the sun in the kingdom of, the, of their father who have ear to hear. Now you hear, God has given us ears to be able to hear the truths of the kingdom, to be able to have a spiritual eye to see those truths. You remember they asked him, you know, Lord, why are you speaking to the the people in Paris, because it's not given to the world, it's not given to them to know those mysteries, but to you it's given. If you've got ears to hear, it's a spiritual matter, right? There's no amount of preaching or expertise on my part that could ever impart to you the ability, Brother Randy. I can't do anything or tell you anything to give you the ability to hear and discern not only that outward thing, but I couldn't do the spiritual things. Nor nor do I have the ability to, to make the those that can't see. I can't give them spiritual eyes. Uh, but the duty of the gospel is to preach to those who have got eyes and have, and have ears to hear those things. And the church is made for those that not only do they see them and hear them, but they do them. They are they're doers and not just hearers only. But in the 44th chapter, the 13th chapter of the, the Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, uh, that's just right where we left off at the last, last, the last uh, service. And again, because he's already told us uh, two or three parables before that. Again, the kingdom of heaven uh, is likened to a treasure that's hid in a field. And I got some running down on that word treasure. But what what is a treasure? A treasure is is it's you know a treasure is not a treasure unless it's been depo- unless it's been deposited. Uh, 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 our, the government and rich people they've got lots of, of wealth. It's not a treasure to me. It's not deposited in my account, Randy. You see. So, but, but a treasure that's deposited, anything that's a treasure to me is deposited in my account. Therefore, grace is deposited in our account as a treasure. Uh, a treasure of grace and mercy, those things are, are out there are treasures to us. The, the hope of the resurrection, the, uh, 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 the, the preaching of the gospel, the, the fellowship that we have one with another, the, uh, uh, the, the, the knowing the, with the assurance that when, when we gather ourselves together, small though we may be, that even even in that small number that the Lord Himself has has come and met with us, uh, it's a treasure to us to know, brothers and sisters, that 
Well, Jesus said, I, 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 if I go away, I'm, I'm not going to leave you comfort. I'll, I'll send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And, and then again, a little bit later on, I think it's in 48, uh, Matthew 14, said, so I'll not leave you comfort. I will come to you. And that which tells me that when the Holy Ghost comes to us in our time of need, that Jesus Christ is, is present with us, a treasure. Uh, uh, but he said the kingdom of God is like unto treasure that's hidden in a field. Now that, that treasure is talking about God's children. You are a treasure that has been deposited into the covenant of redemption. You were, you were placed in Christ before the foundation of the world. And the field is talking about the, the, the church here in time. He said, again, the kingdom of heaven. I'm just going to read both of these parables and I will come back. Uh, it's like the kingdom of heaven like a treasure that's that's hid in a, in a field, and uh, the, the which when a man had found it, he hideth, he hideth, uh, and for joy there uh, goeth and selleth all they have, and buyeth that field. I'm going to try to cover both of these if I have time. So again, the kingdom of heaven likened to a merchant man. Now, you know, I, I, I come from the, I, I spent my teen years from mid, mid late 60s to the mid 70s, and so I watched a little house on the prairie. Y'all ever saw a little house on the prairie? You remember? Uh, uh, Nails Olson, he's the merchant there. You know, I don't know why every time I hear this word merchant or merchandise, or Nails Olson, I don't know why. I just think about that man. Uh, a merchant was somebody, the word by its definition, was somebody who travels uh, with their merchandise. They sell and, and buy, buy and sell. Now, this can't be anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, he he bought us, brothers and sisters. He, he, he traveled, if you will, if you can take it, because we travel from heaven's glory world and, and descended uh, to this low ground of sin and sorrow and, and, and what is his merchandise? He, he kept the law until John the Temple didn't he? And, and, and this Holy Spirit comes upon us and grants us uh, the fruits of the Spirit. One, one of those fruits is faith. Uh, there, there's the merchandise. There's that merchant man. He said seeking goodly pearls. Uh, what, what are the goodly pearls? The goodly pearls on the secret to me uh, uh, is talking about Seeking and saving that which is lost. What did Christ come to do? He came, he came to save uh, his, his people from their sins. Too. And I'm going to get that in a little bit of detail in just a minute. Who, when he had found one, one pearl of great price, how valuable, uh, brothers and sisters, are you to God? How valuable are you to the Spirit? How, how much value does Jesus Christ himself place upon your soul? Uh, that's you are that one pearl of great price, brothers and sisters. He said he went and sold all that he had. Went and sold himself, uh, brothers and sisters. Kept the law to job the tittle. He didn't just do it. I, I know he did it for all of us, but he did it for us individually, Randy. He did it for you, uh, Randy, uh, Joe, uh, uh, Margaret. Uh, listen now, uh, uh, Stephanie, Lisa. He did it for you, do you see? Uh, if, if you were a pearl of great price, so much so uh, that he would give his life uh, as a ransom for your, for your sins and my sins. Anyway, verse 44. Anyway, it says again, the kingdom had like to that treasure which a man hid in. We're talking about the church now. We're, we're sitting together in this church house as a family looking at the family album here. We're looking at snapshots they're going to teach us something concerning the Lord's church. These things we need to know, brothers and sisters. We, we learn from these things. He said, uh, there's a treasure deposited in a field uh, which a man had, when he, uh, which, uh, which a man had found. And, and he hideth, and for great joy there uh, he selleth all that he hath and buy that field. Now, I want to call your attention to uh, Psalms, the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 135. Psalms 135, and that's kind of, I know if I get to Proverbs, I can get to it a little quicker by going backwards. Psalms uh, 135, we'll just pick up with the first verse. I'm always looking for a verse, but most of the time it seems like it's just as easy. If you hit one, everybody can find verse one. Listen, listen to this. We're talking about that treasure hidden in, hid in a field. The man, when he finds it, goes and sells all that he has and buys it. He says, praise ye the Lord. Uh, uh, praise ye the in the name of the Lord. That word name is his authority. It's his renown, his, his glory. Uh, uh, praise ye the Lord, Jehovah. Praise him. 
All ye servants of the Lord. There's specifically pointing to a particular people. Uh, notice this word, this, this word is not written for, this is not written for the world. Uh, it, it'd be a waste of time, brothers and sisters, for us to, to ask the world to praise the Lord. They won't do it. But there are those, beloved, that, uh, that do love the Lord. He says, stand ye in the house of the Lord. Here's the church. Stand in the house, stand in the church, stand firm, stand, stand in place in the church. Stand ye in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Here's a description, if you will, of the Lord's church. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Because, why? Because he's a good God. Because he, because he, because he, he, he loves his people. Because he sent, he sent his son to die for us. Sing praises unto his name. That's what we do, brothers and sisters. That's, that's when, we, when we open our songbooks and when we're looking for a song, one that's familiar to us, but more specifically, one who honors glory to our God. Praise his name. Why? It is pleasant. I love that. The name of the Lord is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself. And I love this. If, if I had made this clear to you before, I'll make it clear to you now about the Jacob and Israel. You know, Jacob was born with the name Jacob. It meant a supplanter. It means somebody who takes something by deception, who weasel you out of, if you will. That's Jacob right there. You know, he, he, his brother come in from hunting and was famished, you know, just near, near ready to collapse. And, and there was Jacob. He's sitting there making a pottage. And, 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 and his brother smelled and said, you know, I haven't let any pottage. He said, well, I will if you'll sell me your birthright. And, and, and he said, well, said, what good is a birthright if I'm just going to perish? So he kind of swindled him out of it, you know, kind of. But he said he, the Lord, he wrestled with the Lord. And, and the Lord changed his name to Israel. It means a prince, the prince that lived under, under the Lord. Jacob is the, a type of the flesh. It's the type of you and I as we sit, as, as we're in this house today, living in our flesh. We're Jacobites in this respect. So he said the Lord had chosen, chosen Jacobite. Jacob here. We're all Jacobites, beloved. That's, that's where we draw our comfort in the resurrection. It's in Jacob that we, re we recognize a hope in the resurrection. It's, it's, in, it's in Jacob that we get, we're comforted, beloved, in the forgiveness of our sins. In your church. It, it's, it's, it's in Jacob, beloved, that we, that we have a desire to pray for one another. It, it, as Israel, you know, the, the, we, we don't sin. You know, the scripture says that uh, uh, he that is born of God, that's Israel, does not sin. For his seed remains in him, cannot sin. He said, uh, and Israel, for his particular, notice what he says here, treasure. You have a treasure within you. And that treasure within you is the new birth. It's that inner man. He says, uh, it's his particular treasure. Now if you'll just flip over to the next, the next uh, book over here, let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15. And we're going to pick up with, uh, let's see, I just want one verse, uh, verse Six. Uh, he's, uh, the proverb written by, by Solomon, he said in verse 6, is, uh, he said, In the house, you know what the house we're talking about is? House of church and the house of the righteous. How many of us in this house this, this evening are righteous? How many? I don't feel very righteous. But he's talking about the inner man. He's talking about Israel. In the house of the righteous, the house of the saints, is much treasure. Get, you get this now? This, this, is, this is the way the Lord looks at his people in the church. He said, in the house of the righteous is much treasure. But in, the, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. You know, there's nothing good in this world. But in the church, uh, the Lord is good. And, 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 and let's flip over to 21. In, in verse 21 and verse 20. 21 and, tw 21 and 20. He says, there is treasure to be desired in the dwelling of the wise. The dwelling of the wise, in the, in the place of the church. The, when you talk about wise, we're talking about wise in the gospel, wise in, in the things of God. But, but, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He, he squanders his time. And let's go over to John chapter 14, one of my most favorite uh, Places to go in all the Bible. We're talking about that that treasure hidden in a field, which a man 
uh, when he found it, went and sold all that he had and bought that field. So in verse in chapter 14 uh, of, of the book of, of John, he, the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to get a fix on this, what he's talking about here. This is just before when Jesus began to tell the disciples that the Son of Man must be taken by wicked hands and be crucified, to, to be abused and be crucified and be slain. And they tell him that on the third day he'll be raised from the dead. Now, just you got to put yourself in the apostles' place here, the disciples. They they have been eating and drinking and traveling with the Lord Jesus Christ. They they have seen him raise the dead. They they have they've been with him when uh, in in the times where he he healed the sick, gave the the blind their sight, called the deaf to hear. And now what's he telling them? He said, "I'm going to be going what?" I'm not going to be staying with you. And so you can just imagine their hearts became heavy. But they got, he's talking about a treasure here. So he says, let not your heart be troubled. See, the Lord knew their heart. He knew, he knew how you and I would feel, you know, if, it, if we were there, you know. And he began, if Jesus was here with us and told I got to go, it's time for me to go, our hearts would be grieved. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. He said, you've got an abiding faith in, in God. You put that, exercise that faith and put it in Christ. In my father's house are many mansions. We got this mansion here, same uh, root word that we get the word treasures. The same word. It's a, it's a valuable thing. It's a, and, 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 and I, the only way I can explain this is, it's not, we know it's not talking about heaven's glory world. We, we know that. Uh, we, my father's house is not talking about heaven and glory worth. It's talking about the Lord's kingdom. It's talking about that treasure that's hid. It, it's in a field hid, hid there. In my father's house are many mansions. He's talking about you and I because uh, we are those mansions. We've got, the, we've got that treasure hid within us, which is the new birth. We have the Holy Spirit that lives in us, in our spirit. We're the mansions. But if it were not so, he wouldn't lie to us. He's not trying to color coat this or sugarcoat. He tells the truth. This is the way it is. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I would have told you. And we know this is not heaven because of what he says. I go and prepare a place for you. Now we know Jesus is not up in heaven with his carpenter apron on and a saw and a hammer and, and uh, nails up there building mansions for us to go. And we sing songs sometimes. About empty mansions up in heaven. There ain't no empty mansions in heaven. Don't say that the mansions are full. They're full. They're full of the Spirit. They're full of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and that place that He prepares for us is here in time and in the kingdom. Uh, he said, and he said, if I go, if, and if I go and prepare a place for you, if I'm going to go and prepare a place for the church, He said, I will come again. I'm going to be leaving, but I'm going to come here and prepare a place for you. Uh, that, 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 and when I will come again, I will receive you to myself. And we know it, don't we? We've experienced it. That we're two or three together in my name. There am I in their midst. You know, you know, I don't get here before the Lord. He said, I will receive you my, to myself. Uh, 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 that where I am, there you may be also. Now, I got no problem if anybody wants to try, try to tie it to heaven, but they're wrong. Uh, I, could, I know that where Jesus is at, we're going to be. I know that one day when we depart from this world, beloved, we're going to see Jesus face to face. We, we're, we're going to be able to put our hand, uh, as Jesus was telling me an experience that she had last night at my brother-in-law's funeral about how that she felt like there was three angels and one with a hand on this shoulder, one on this one, and one on her back. And she, she said she could feel them. In my father's house of many mansions, for not so, I would have told you, brothers and sisters, that's the way it is in Heaven's glory world. But if we'll be able to take our hand, lay it upon the very heart of Jesus Christ, and then lay our, our heads upon his breast. It's that personal to, to him. But while we live in this world, he comes with us as the person of the, of the Holy Spirit and comforts us. So he says, uh, hey, I go and prepare a place for you, that, uh, and I will come again, and I will receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be. Also, which brings me to, I want to go to Matthew chapter 6. And again, we're talking about that uh, kingdom. We're talking about a treasure, the kingdom of God, like a, a treasure that's in a field. 
that when a man finds it, that he goes and sells all that he has and, and sells it and buys that field. Anyway, in, in chapter 6, verse, start with verse 19, it says, Lay out not for yourselves treasures upon the earth. We got a treasure. We have a treasure on the earth. Because we have a treasure on the earth, we have no need to go and lay up treasures of the earth. I mean, and again, I, 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 I want you to understand, he's not talking about not putting away for your retirement. He's not talking about that. He's telling you, don't put your hope in, in the world. Don't put your hope in gold and silver. Don't put your hope in the government or insurance companies or, or stock and bonds. Those, those things are temporal. They, uh, the 19, in, in, I think it was June the June the 19th, 1929. Many people woke up that, that day and found out that they had put their hope in the wrong thing. And, and one day they had a high stock market, and the next day it crashed, and they lost their God had died. And, uh, so that's what Jesus is talking about. Uh, uh, he's not telling you don't have a savings account, and don't, uh, don't, don't pay your bills. He's not talking about all that stuff. But he's telling you where to put your focus, and we want to put our focus on our treasure. Don't just lay out for yourself treasures upon the earth because you've got a treasure where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through to steal. They come, somebody will take it from you. Uh, I'm reminded of the rich man uh, who the scripture said he, he said he, he, he had all that he, he needed and, and how the Lord said that he, he said, uh, I don't have no place where we, to lay my goods and I know what I'll do. I'll, 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 I'll build bigger silos and place to store my treasures and they built them and he stored them up and he said now you now you can say to your soul uh, uh, be at peace and eat and drink and he said uh, you, and, and the Lord spoke to him and said thou fool this night your soul will be required of you and that's what he's talking about brother, brother, brother sister said uh, uh, he said uh, don't, don't uh, store up things and put your hope in things that are perishable but put your hope and trust in that which is which is permanent, which has some, some, some real, which is real to you, uh, real in, in the kingdom. I told you, there's not but two things in this world that have any value as far as I can tell. That's in the church, uh, the, 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 uh, the worship of our God and the service of the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom and your families. I, there's nothing else uh, that comes close to these. Uh, verse 20 says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. See, it's impossible for us to lay up treasure in heaven's glory world. Brothers and sisters, we get in the kingdom of God many times of what we put into it. You know, have you ever went to church and come back empty? Well, the question we need to be asking ourselves, what did we put into it? Did we spend our time on, on the cable TV or the satellite? Uh, did we, did we, or did we go into the word of God? Did we study? Uh, did we do like I was talking about, sister, brother sister of Spain? Where they, where they took their notebooks and took notes and went and meditated on those things. Did, did we search the scriptures to see if, if, if those things that were preached to us, if they're so? We like the Bereans uh, who search daily whether those things be so. Uh, uh, now, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, really, we get a lot back a lot more than what we put into it. Uh, uh, we know that from, the, uh, from those that the Lord gave the talents, don't we? He gave ten talents to one. Five to another and one to the another. And, and you remember what happened? The one with the ten invested that ten. Put it with, to usury. And invested it and reaped back ten more talents. The one who had the five talents, and he, he invested his five and restored to his master ten talents. And the Lord to each one of them said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll, make you, um, I'll, I'll, make, I'll put you over many things. Uh, we get back. A lot more than what we put into it. You won't talk about investments. Here's a place you put your investment. You don't get a 100% return. You get a 500, a 1,000% return. You get you recruit some 50, some, some 30, some 40, some 60, some 100 fold. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. This is where you do it. Here's your investment where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where Thieves do not break forth through the steel. I'll tell you, what you've got here, they can't tax. What you've got here, they can't take from you. The robbers can't steal it, brothers and sisters. Uh, 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 nobody can take from you uh, that what you've got in the kingdom. 
He said, for where your treasure is. Remember what, what the psalmist said? What a man, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, we are oftentimes, what goes into our hearts and minds is a reflection of who we are spiritually and emotionally. What we take in, don't think it doesn't have an effect on you. I, I know that it does. I, I mean, Procter & Gamble would not spend millions and millions of dollars on television commercials. They didn't believe that what they, what they show you and what they tell you on TV is not going to affect the way you buy. I, I know that for a truth. Uh, he said, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Uh, you know, we don't need to be contaminating our treasure with the things of this world. He said, he said uh, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. I'll tell you, if you put your treasure, if your heart's in the, if your treasure is the stock market, that's where your heart's going to be. You're, you, 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 that's a terrible place to be, especially in this world today. Let's go over to Mark's Gospel, and I want to look at uh, chapter 10. <coughs> and I want to pick up with the 13th verse. Yeah, Mark 10, 13. And they brought unto him children. I'll pause right here because I want to say something to you. And I've said this to you before. Children. That's what makes up the kingdom of God. And I'm not, not necessarily talking about little, little big ones. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about the, the attitude of children. My, when my, one of my grandsons joined the church over at, uh, at Grace here a month or two ago, and his testimony was, I, I got... I have faith in myself. And, and your first thought was to think, if an adult had said that, we'd say, well, you're not supposed to have faith in yourself. The little boy was saying, I've got, there's faith in here. There's faith, I've, i got faith in inside here. So it's in here. And he, he didn't know how, he, he's he having trouble. He didn't know how to express it. How, 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 do you, how does a, a, a six-year-old, seven-year-old, how do they tell you what's going on inside? Uh, they, uh, he, he said, he said, I've got, there's faith in here. He said, I've got thousands of faith. He, he said, it's in there. And it's willing in me. It's strong. And he said, it's coming from the mouth of a baby. He says, uh, he said, in, in, in 10 and 13. Now, this you got to understand, too. Many times the apostles would argue about the, over who was the greatest in the kingdom of God. But he said that they brought young children unto him, that he would touch them. And his disciples rebuked, uh, 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 rebuked those that brought them. Little children, little children now. And when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. I'll take that to mean he wasn't very happy. And he said unto them, Suffer little children to come unto me. That, that word suffer means exactly what you think it means. He said, You allow it until it's painful. Just like, if, just like suffering, you allow it as if it were suffering. Allow, it to, allow the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Who are the citizens of the kingdom of God? They're children. He said, for such are the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God, whoever will not receive the kingdom, the church, the way the little children receive it, as a little child, we know the brothers and brothers said, we need to be converted. I've got, I've got, just, I don't just have gray hair up here, I've got it down here to match. I'm getting, it seems like every time I look in the mirror, I get a little bit grayer every day. At least if we're riding in the car, was that, I don't know if that was yesterday or today. So we got to start talking to each other a little bit louder. We can't, we can't, we can't hear each other sitting right next to each other. I, in those times, I've got to be converted. I, 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 uh, there's no adult. Can't, uh, they're not, they're children of God. They're not adults of God. We, we've got to be all converted as a, a little child. We've got to to see see the the wonder and the and the, and the, the blessings that are that are that are the kingdom of God and the blessings of the Lord. Uh, he said, "Some little children being come to me and forbid them not, for such are the kingdom of God." Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Brother Sister, I don't know about you, but I want to be converted. I want to enter into that kingdom. I I want to enter into the presence of my Lord. I, I, I want to do those things which please Him. I, I, I want to hear His voice. I want, I want to hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. To enter into the joy of your Lord. Uh, uh, it's children, brother, sister, that, that enter into that blessing of the Lord. So He took them in His arms 
and, 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 and he put he, he took them up in his arm and put his hand upon them and blessed them. Brother and sister, have you ever saw yourself? Have you ever seen yourself sitting on Jesus' lap as a child and having him place his hand upon you to bless you? I, I remember when I was uh, back in Alabama, uh, a, a, a doctor did a lot of counseling. Said, I, said, Thomas, I want you to imagine uh, uh, a street down in Israel that's full of people. And there's a crowd gathered around. And, uh, and, and, and you go and see what the commotion is. There's Jesus picking up little children and, and, and blessing them. And, and he looks to you and, and, and holds his hands out to you. And you're able to climb up and sit down on, on, on the Lord's lap. I mean, just think about that for a minute. And have him take you in his arms and, and hold you close and, and, and bless you. That's what I, I never had seen, never experienced that before. And that's what that's what we need. Uh, you know that every one of us is still a child. Did you know that they tell us psychologically that uh, when we you know when we reach the age of five or six, we're the same person that we were five and, when we were five and six. If you whatever scared you when you were five or six, pretty much probably still bothers you to this very day. Inside of every one of us, there's a child. I will tell you this morning, beloved, I'm not, I'm not preaching to adult, uh, adults of God. I, I'm preaching to the child within you. I'm preaching to that which has been born of the Spirit. That, that, that child uh, uh, that, cannot, that, that cannot sin. Uh, that's the one I, I'm preaching to. Uh, he, says, he said, and he took it up in his arm and he blessed him. And immediately, uh, in verse 17, he said, and when he had done, when he had gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him. And he asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now look at, I want you to look at the transition. Look at this for a minute. As we're thinking about God's kingdom. Here was a fellow that had come to him. Uh, uh, just immediately after he had been blessed with a little church. Said, if, if, you don't, if you're not converted as a little child, you can't enter in. Here, here's, a, here's a probably by complete accident, right? No, it wasn't by accident. This is by design. As soon as he did it, here comes a guy. I, what can I do as an adult, as a grown man, what can I do that I might inherit eternal life? And, and Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Now, don't you look at this boy's answer. He answered, said to the master, All these have I observed from my youth up. What was Jesus just doing? Blessing the little children. He said, This is what, I used to, this is what I've done since I was a little boy, like that little baby. But you know what? He grew up. And I don't mean physically, I'm talking about in his own eyes. And Jesus, Jesus beholding him, loved him. So don't try to tell me this boy went to hell. If he did, he went to hell abiding under the Lord, under the Lord's love. He said, Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing you lack, if you'll permit me to say it this way, he grew up. Like I say, he's no longer, he's, he's, he's no longer small in his own sight. He said, Go thy way and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure. Treasure in heaven, and come and take up thy, take up the cross and follow me, brothers and sisters. I want you to see he he had to be small in his own eyes. He said, and, and, and he was sad, and he said, and he went, and he was sad at that saying, and he went away grieved. You know what? He didn't hear it with a child's eyes. I mean, he didn't hear it with a child's ears. He didn't see the Lord with a child's eyes. He didn't, he didn't come there with the faith of a little child. He, he grew up. He, he, he forgot what it was like. And the disciples, they were astonished at his words. So they all thought the same thing. They associated wealth and power and, and, and stature and the taller you are, the more closer you are to God, I guess. If I'm six foot and you're five, I'm, I'm two foot closer to God because I'm two foot taller. And the disciples were astonished. And Jesus answered again. You know, I don't need any indication to ask him anything. Did you hear him ask him anything, Randy? He knew their thoughts. He knew that what he said had astonished them. Because 
See, they, they were thinking as adults. And he said unto them, children. <laughs> I love this. I mean, think about this, brothers and sisters. Children. How hard is it for them to trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? You see, you get to say, hey, you grown-ups, you adults. He said, children. He's talking to the disciples. His children, how hard is it for those who, who trust in their riches, those that have put their treasure in the earth? It's hard for them to enter the kingdom of God. They, 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 sit, they can sit in the, in the church, brothers and sisters. They can sit in the, this building, and his brother Dallas said, this building we call the church, they can sit in it, in the pews, they can open the songbook, they can hear the words of the gospel, but they don't enter in because their mind is not focused on it. Their heart is far from that thing. You've got to have your focus straight. you got to be as a little child. You've got to receive it the way children receive it. Uh, he, said, uh, he said it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Do I need to elaborate on that? You know what an eye of a needle is? It's not, not the solar needle. It's a little small gateway in the city that that, that you had to get your camel down on his knees and almost crawl through that gave the, the guards a chance to inspect everything on the camel to make sure you wasn't a marauder or some kind of thief breaking through. It's easier for the camel to crawl through that eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the spiritual kingdom of God. And I put that word spiritual in myself. And they, and they were astonished out of measure. So when he got through talking to them, did they understand? No, they still, they were more astonished. They, they, again, they think of themselves, who's the greatest in the kingdom of God? So he says, uh, and they were astonished out of measure. They were just stunned, saying among themselves, and who then can be saved? If it's not, if, it's, if we're not saved by works of righteousness, which we have done, if, 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 if our wealth in this world, is, if our treasures are not measured, by that which we have deposited at the bank here in Wichita Falls. If that's not how you measure it, he said, well, how do you measure it? Jesus looked upon them and said, with men it's impossible. That's why, that's why I remind you, brother and sister, when, when you hear the word kingdom of God, we talk about the church, that's why I say don't look around because you're not going to find the church that way. Remember, the kingdom of God comes without observation. People, people are not going to find it by looking for it with a natural eye, you're not going to hear about it with a natural ear. It's a spiritual matter. The kingdom of God is within you. There, I can't stress it to you enough. When the, when, the, when the final amen takes place in this building today, and we depart from this place, there is no, this church is not here. The building is here. The church is in existence while you're here. You are the body of the church. With men, it's impossible but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. You can't say anything impossible to God. Then Peter began to say unto, unto him, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. What's in it, brothers and sisters? What is in it for you? What's the benefit of the kingdom of God? What do you gain in the kingdom? So there's some things that we come to mind right away. We gain the gospel, don't we? We gain that fellowship that we have with one another. There, there is no substitute for it. Nobody can imitate it. It's, it, it you, can find, you only find these things in the presence of the Lord, only with Jesus. So, what, so what's, what do we have outside of that? What do we gain? What's, there, what's, what's in it for us? Jesus answered and said, Very truly, I tell you the truth, I say unto you, that no man, there is no man that hath left house. Think about this for a minute. When we, we, when we shifted our focus off of the world, now let's think about this for a minute. Away from the house, or brethren, or sisters, father, mother, wife, and children, and lambs, real estate. When our mind is, is taken away from that, for my sake, for Jesus' sake, and the gospel's, when we shift our hearts from those things and we shift them towards seeking first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of Christ and we're doing it for, for the sake of the Lord and for the gospel's sake, verse 30, 
when we do that thing. But he shall receive, listen, receive 100 fold now in this present time. What's in it for us? We receive 100 fold in this kingdom, in the church, in this time, in the church, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lambs. What's he saying? Is he saying, is he talking about, when he, when he talks about uh, uh, houses, is he talking about, what kind of, is he talking about natural houses? He's talking about the churches. He's talking about, he's talking about those things which are important to us. Not a visible house, but a spiritual house. Brother Sister, we can leave this place. We can drive up to Canyon and sit down in another house. We can leave from Canyon and go to Amarillo. Sit down in another house. We can leave Amarillo and go to Borger and sit in another house. We can leave there and go down to Denton to another house and to Farmersville and to Paris and to, to Dallas and to every place in where Lord people gather together. Hundreds and thousands of houses are ours because we have taken our focus off of the things of the world and placed it upon Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Houses and, and brethren. I tell you, brothers and sisters, I have no problem when I go to Canyon and to, and, and to Borger and to Amarillo and to Dallas and to Paris. And each, I have no problem at all looking to my brothers and my sisters straight in the face and hugging them and tell them, I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. I, I, I've got little Shorty Wainscott down there in, 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 in Dixie. He's a father to me. Uh, uh, treated me like, like his own son and his mother like my mother. Some of you brought, some of you are like fathers and mothers to me today. Uh, you've got brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lambs. Hundreds fold, brothers and sisters, and they can't be taken away from you with persecutions. You can't abandon the world without them noticing. You know, you know, I'll tell you how you know. Try not paying your taxes and see if they notice. You'll find out they will. It said in the world to come. Eternal life. Those sisters, when we sit in this place, there are times that eternal life seems like it's right there. We can almost sometimes just feel like we can just reach out and touch heaven itself. Just glimpses of it we get in this world. He said, but the, uh, but the many that are first shall be last and the last first. That's what I was talking about earlier about the economy of the church. Uh, it's, 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 it's reverse of the world. The pastor your, your pastor, I am, I'm your servant. Brother, you don't serve me. I'm your servant. And, and, and the deacons are your servants. We are servants who serve other servants. The first is last, and the last is first. I want to go to, I got a few minutes. Let's go to Matthew, back to Matthew chapter 20. And we'll start beginning to try to wind it, wind things down. Matthew chapter 20. Another parable that I think is like a, a second cousin or sister to this one. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder. Maybe I won't have to preach this but, but once. Uh, uh, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Now, I want to clarify this right away. Again, this is another parable that the Lord has given. He's telling us the church, the, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the old Baptist church, the heaven just like a man who's a householder. Householder is the one who owns the house. Don't say who owns our house. I'm not talking about the building again. I'm talking about the church. It's not, not I don't own it. Bro Joe, you, you're the deacon. You don't own it, Randy. You own it. You got the deed on the spiritual kingdom of God. I don't. But I know that Jesus does. Jesus is the householder. He says, uh, which went out early in the morning to hire the laborers in, in his vineyard. Now, there's two ways you can look at this. You can go back to the garden. You can go back down to Genesis. Every one of those who labored in the kingdom are included here. Or you can go back to the beginning of the church when the Lord came up out of the water of baptism, when the Lord, uh, 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 the, the Spirit of the Lord descended bodies as a dove and lit upon the, the Lord and, and the voice from heaven to this my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. You can look at those disciples. You can look at the, 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 our, our forefathers who, who gave their life to the church as being laborers in the, in the harvest. You can go back to the beginning. He said he went out early in the morning to hire the laborers. Now I want you to realize, Brother Sister, you talk about hiring. Now I, I, I work for the school. And I probably ought not to spread this around, but I get paid twice a month. 
I get paid at the first of the month and the middle of the month. It used to be once a month. But they just changed it a couple of years ago. Now, I would not be over there at, 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 at Frisco ID if I wasn't expecting to get, you know, they didn't hire me. They, they would probably not appreciate me just coming out the street and just, just start working around there. They'd say, you don't work here. But I, I got hired, Randy. I got, I got responsibilities because I, for that school district to, to, to do the, the work for them and, and, and they give me a compensation for it. So the Lord went out, talking about the kingdom, the church, went out to hire laborers into his vineyard. The vineyard's a church. It's a place where the fruit grows. And we, do we know who the fruit are, is? We are the fruit. We're the mansion. We're the treasure that's hidden in that field. And so he, so he went into the vineyard. And when he went out, he, he sent them out to his vineyard. He hired them, sent them out, the prophets under, under the law. Then he went out about the third hour, nine in the morning. And saw others standing idle. And they're standing idle in, in the marketplace. It means, this word idle means they were motionless. They were unemployed, if you will. They didn't have any job. They were worthless. They were standing idle in the marketplace. We talked about that part, that merchant a minute ago, the marketplace. That's the place where the where the where we buy the truth and, and sell it not. It's where the gospel's preached. It's where we where we that love the Lord receive the gospel. It's where we put, we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And we say amen. And they said unto him, and he said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard. And whatsoever is right, I will give you. That word give me, I'll pay you. I'll give you what's right. And they went their way. And he went out about the sixth hour, at noon, he went out at lunchtime. When you, you and I are sitting down eating our sandwiches and corn chips, he, he's, he's out looking for more laborers, and he went out the ninth hour, three o'clock, and did likewise, so everyone that he saw, he said, you, why are you standing idle? Well, no man is hired up. He said, well, you go into my vineyard, and you labor, and whatever is right, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you, I'll, I'll give you your wage. And about the eleventh hour, I, I don't mind telling you this too, brothers and sisters, I, I believe we're in the eleventh hour. I believe, I believe that sun's about to set. I, it may not be in my lifetime, but Randy, I would not be surprised if, if I wake up one day and I see the Lord. I mean, I, I think we're that close. I think we're in the eleventh hour. He said, and, and we, here we are in the eleventh hour. He went out and found others standing idle. And he said, then why stand you here all the day idle? Why are you still standing around? And they said to him, because no man hath hired us. And he said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard. Go to the church. And whatever is right, ye shall receive. You'll get that the word receive. That word receive, it means, uh, it means to uh, it means to gain. It means to get a paycheck, what it means. And connect to what he's talking about. He said, I'll pay you. And so when the evening was come, now the sun is setting. Let's just go ahead and say it's there. Let's just go ahead and say that they're on standard time. So the sun sets, it, it, you know, six o'clock at dark. So the sun is set, and the Lord of the vineyard said to, the, to his steward, Call the laborers, call the workers, give them their hire. Brothers and sisters, that happens every time we enter the kingdom of God. Every time that we come to this place, and the Lord is with us, when we are laboring in the kingdom, we always receive our hire. There's a blessing in it. Beginning from the last unto the first, and we've already talked about that. And when they and when they that came that were hired in the eleventh hour, he started with the ones he hired last, they received every man a penny. That's uh, 17 and a half cents our money. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. Why? That's the same thing that we see in the world today. You go out into the world to I call them mega churches, I don't want to call. And they see, they see the Lord bless us. They say, well, well, if he blesses them, said, I look at what we're doing. We should get more. And he said, they likewise received every man a penny. Why is that? Because the Lord had mercy. And we will have mercy. And whom he will, he hardened. You know, he can do what he wants with his own. And when they received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, <clears throat> they murmured against the good man. They spoke against the Lord and said, These have wrought but one hour. Now, if we're if I'm right, brother, I believe I am, but this is the eleventh hour. 
this is this is no doubt the shouting ground. If we are in the eleventh hour and the sun sets at six and it's if we're talking about being five o'clock, he said, and thou hast made them equal with us. We, you know, we've received the same blessing that Moses received. Banner. We have received the blessings of, of David, Daniel, Amos, the, 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 all the prophets, John the Baptist. Think about this for a minute. Uh, John the Apostle, all the apostles, we received those blessings that they received. He, we, he made us equal to them. You ever felt like you're equal to Moses? John the Baptist? He said, they have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I'm glad, I'm glad he, they're not his enemy. I do think no wrong. This is good news, brothers and sisters. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that as thy may is, and go thy way, and I will give to the last, to us, to you and I, even as unto thee. See, God is not a respecter of person. As some would think. He said, Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Can't Jesus grant us the same blessings as he, as he gave those for? Sure, he can. And he does. He says, I am not evil because I am good. And I'll close with this verse. So the last shall be first. You want to know how it is in the kingdom? Here it is again. The last is first. He that is the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. And the first, last. Don't put preachers up on a pedestal. First off, from a preacher's perspective, it's a long way to fall. Remember, the way, the way up in the kingdom of God is down. We've got to be on our knees. The way down, the way to be lifted up is to kneel, is to be down. And many are called but few were chosen. And I just want to say one thing about this verse, just an explanation. The last is first, and the first is last. Many are called, but a few were chosen. There are many more that are called, brothers and sisters, but there were a few that were chosen. You say, well, who were chosen? Well, I know the 12 that were, for sure, that were chosen. I know that I know that the Apostle Paul was chosen. I don't think that Jesus met uh, Paul on the road to Damascus and invited him to come into the church. I believe he was called. I'm positive that I was invited. I, I believe I was. Many are called, but few are chosen. I was called. I wasn't chosen that way. But thanks God, if we if we was invited and we opened up the door of the church for the reception of new members, brothers and sisters, that's an invitation. It's not 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 being chosen by God, but called. Called. He that hath the ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says of the church. We're going to sing a song. We're all members here. We're going to stand and sing a song. It's the the right hand of fellowship. Anybody have a selection?
I know we got some some uh, <coughs> here Sunday coming up on it border, wasn't it? Yeah, on that, the 14th of December, Saturday 14th. I mean, and I know we have one at Farmers <coughs> for New Year's. Uh, and I, I you probably you hadn't heard because you wasn't here, but I will be here first Sunday. But Randy's going to fill the stand, so y'all be sure and be praying for him. Uh, pray for Brother uh, uh, and Kenny. He'll, Kenny, he'll be here next week. He needs, he needs your prayers. Pray for one another until the Lord brings us back together again. Any, any other announcements? Mine's clear, Brother Randy, would you dismiss us, please? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we give thee thanks, Lord, for the blessing that thou hast bestowed upon us, but for the opportunity to be here this afternoon. Lord, we ask that thou would continue to be with us, to walk with us on down through our lives. Keep us, Lord, from evil. We would ask, Lord, that thou would be with each one of us as we travel home, and that thou would keep us safe. Ask, Lord, that thou would be with all thy children wherever they may be, Lord, for thou knowest their needs before they ask. Lord, we would ask that thou would continue to be with this nation and this country. Please bless us and pray with us. We ask in Jesus' name before his name. I'll have them take a nap. <coughs> Dinner will do that to you.